a little loud in here, my apologies, but we have a lot going on. Right now, I'm running a job on my Xtool S1, you can see right here, and come over here. I'm also running a job on my Xtool P2 at the same exact time. Now, come back over to the computer real quick. Look, one open program running multiple jobs while still being able to edit files. I'm also designing on my S1 with a camera snapshot when the S1 clearly doesn't have a camera. What is this sorcery and how does it work? Let's take a look inside the brand new Xtool Creative Space 2.0. Before we dive into the new S1 camera feature, I wanna take a super quick look at some of the other new features of 2.0 that have caught my eye. First, the ability to connect multiple Xtool lasers at once and quickly swap between them. This capability is extremely relevant to my interest because I have both the S1 and P2 and it would be cool to be able to use them at the same time. Before we get started, I'm using software version 2.0.37 beta. If you aren't sure what beta means, basically it's a version of the software that's still in development. It might have some small issues and quirks that they're gonna iron out before pushing it to a stable version. To access your connected devices, first you must start a new project or open an existing project. Right smack dab in the middle at the top, you'll see a drop-down menu. Creative Space will default to the last machine you worked with. Right now I'm connected to my S1 and you can see the S1 grid environment. Now I'm gonna to connect to my P2. Once you connect to another device, you'll get this pop-up warning about changing device environments. Just click OK and both machine connections are now live. That's cool and all, but I wanna work on both lasers at the same time. How does that work? To do that, you click on the plus tab symbol here, which starts a new project. From there, you'll wanna to connect to your other laser. Now you can see I have a project tab for my S1 and a project tab for my P2 that I can move between seamlessly. This is important because these machines are very different. The processing area, settings, material parameters are all different and need to be worked on in separate environments. So far so good, but the best part of this feature is when you combine it with the new multi-canvas editing capabilities. This is something I've been waiting for from laser software for a long time an easy and user-friendly way to work on multiple projects at once while other jobs are running on the laser, or in our case, both lasers. Navigate to your project tab and look directly below, you'll see another section called Canvas 1. To add more canvases, Canvi, canvases, I guess, just click it once and a sidebar will open. Now you can click the plus button to add as many Canvi as you want. Each canvas is a brand new blank environment for designing. You can change the mode, material, focus depth, marking area, and so on. Now you can easily move between your multiple machines, multiple projects, and multiple canvases. Now, let's talk about the feature that really piqued my interest when I first heard about it, the new S1 camera snapshot feature. If you don't already know, the S1 doesn't come with a camera preview like the more expensive P2 laser. For a lot of people, this is a big deal, so it looks like Xtool heard your feedback and implemented a workaround. The first thing you need to do is download the Creative Space app on your phone and log into your account. Next, you need to print and cut out the positioning stickers and align them to the four corners of your workspace. The instructions say to do this on the base plate and use a glue stick, but since I'm just testing this out, I opted for some clear tape. According to Xtool, these don't need to be lined up 100% accurate to work, and that's good because mine aren't at all. Next, it's time to calibrate the sticker positions. The app will guide you through this process, which is very similar to the marking your processing area function if you've done that in the past. After that, we put down our test material in between the stickers. For today, I'm using some wooden coasters. 
Now we snap a photo from the Xtool app on our phone while trying to keep the phone as level as possible. Moving over to my laptop, I click on shoot background here at the bottom and scan the QR code. The image is transferred from my phone over to my laptop and I'm ready to start positioning my artwork. All right, let's do a little live demo for this part of the project. I'm going to show you how I put the artwork onto both of these coasters. Remember, this is the S1 image that we just took from our phone. So we'll see how it works. And we're also going to encounter a couple new smaller features of Xtool Creative Space 2.0 along the way that I'll point out. All right, so let's get this going. First thing I'm gonna do is import my artwork. Here is the artwork I'm using. It's a little AI generated cat with a cowboy hat on. It's got one ear under the hat, one ear going through the hat. You can't tell this guy anything. He is just amazing. Anyways, he's gonna be our test subject for this project. I'm not looking for super precise placement for this one. I just want to see that when I place this artwork onto each of these coasters, that when I run the engraving file, it actually shows up on the coaster and not somewhere else in the middle of the project. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit, zoom in here. And that looks good to me for our little test example here. All right, now moving over here to the sidebar, the mode will be process on base plate because this is the base plate. Material, I'm not exactly sure what these coasters are made of, but it's probably similar to basswood plywood. So I'm going to select basswood plywood. And here I'm gonna show you a new feature, which is really, really cool. This is called the easy set panel. So if you click, once you select your once you select your material and then you click on your artwork, you'll see a section that comes up here for the processing type, for the setting, it'll say reference, and then it'll give you some values. If you click easy set panel, Xtool actually had a bunch of people just run tests and run material tests for them and then imported all that information along with a photograph of the result into whatever the Xtool material database is. So some of these, when you select them, like we selected basswood plywood, will actually come up with a photo showing you what it is, what laser it is, and then what the result looks like. And not only this, you can actually select these by clicking on them, by you know selecting which one you would like to replicate. So let's say I want this one here, it'll expand. And now I can actually click on one of these graphics and it'll set those parameters for my engraving, which is just crazy. So I'm gonna go with this one up here, 250 speed power 20. So all you have to do is click on it and it'll actually set that as your power and your speed uh, for your engraving settings, which is super cool. I haven't tested out all of these. I don't know which materials have this and which don't, but some of the more basic ones like plywood, the basswood plywood and stuff will definitely have that. Okay, so the um, focus distance I already set. Processing path, I'm gonna leave to auto planning. Okay, so let's process this. And here's another new feature of Creative Space 2.0, an upgraded preview screen. If you've ever used Lightburn before, this might actually look familiar to you. One of the things I hated about the previous version of Creative Space is the preview screen was basically dead weight. It didn't give any insight as to what was gonna happen when you started your laser. But with this upgraded preview screen, we get a little bit more insight as to what the laser is gonna be doing when we start running the file. So if we start over here to the bottom left, you'll see it has a play button and it says, total estimated time of eight minutes to run your file. Over to the right, we have a toggle for laser module trajectory. You can toggle the red line you see there on and off. That's just gonna show you the path that the laser is gonna take to complete your artwork. So you might as well just leave it on. It's not gonna hurt anything. And over to the right, you'll see a little scale. And this is just the speed that the preview is gonna play. You can leave it at whatever you want. I usually go a little bit higher, sometimes the max 40X, but we'll do a little bit slower just to watch it. And once you set this, 
move this out of the way here. You can zoom in a little bit to your artwork and then you can click play. This is not gonna start your file. All it's gonna do is start the preview. And while this is playing, you can change the speed that the preview is going. So this is just giving you a little bit of insight to how your laser is gonna be running when you start this file. And that's a look at the newest preview screen for Xtool Creative Space. I'm so happy about this because I love my preview screen and I use it all the time to make sure the laser is doing what I want it to do. So let's click start. So I just started running the project. I hope it's not too loud in the audio. You can see here it has the processing screen up here and it tells you how much time it has left on the project. So one of the other new features, which I absolutely love, is the ability to now minimize this project and start working on other projects. This is not something you could do in the previous version of Creative Space. So if you go up to the left-hand corner and click minimize, and now you can go ahead and start working on whatever else you wanna start working on. You can start working on another laser if you want to. And if you, want, and if you ever wanna see your jobs, you can click up here on this little um, three panel uh, button up here and it'll show you the jobs that you're currently processing, how much time there's left on the project. You can pause it, you can cancel it from there. And then you can also go to your history tab and see all the other jobs that you've recently run. This is a game changing upgrade for this software because it makes it so much easier to keep your processes going and you aren't bogged down by the job you're currently running on your laser. So I'm gonna let these coasters finish and then we'll take a look at them. Well, as you can see, I hit both targets and that was the only goal I set out for this test example but it looks like the easy set panel material suggestions were also pretty close. Okay, so let me give my first impressions of the 2.0 updates so far. As I mentioned in the intro, I'm using a beta version of the software, but it's slated to be released to everyone very soon. So make sure to keep an eye out for that. I'll start off by saying I'm very impressed with the overall direction that Xtool is taking with their software upgrades. You can tell they really listen to feedback and are actively looking to add features that people are requesting. The biggest game changer for me is definitely the multi-device, multi-project, multi-canvas workflow capabilities. It's crazy how every other app and software we use daily can sort through different open tabs, but our laser software options are still catching up. I'm super excited to use this going forward, especially as I add more Xtool lasers to my arsenal. Being able to control them all in one place with a Wi-Fi connection is amazing and it really makes things go a lot quicker for me. The S1 camera snapshot feature is pretty cool and I understand why they added it, but for someone like me, I don't see myself using it much. I come from an era before cameras were standard in lasers and old habits die hard, as they say, but I totally understand that since the S1 is marketed to a novice audience, having the ability to use a camera is very helpful when getting started. I was actually more impressed with some of the smaller updates like the new preview screen and the way the software organizes the active job list. I also found the estimated time function to be accurate, which is great. There's nothing worse than starting a job and the estimated time to completion is way off. I guess the elephant in the room that I didn't mention at all was the updated interface. I don't have much to comment on that yet since I'm still testing it out but I found it to be pretty intuitive, especially if you're coming from an earlier version of Creative Space. The biggest changes being the addition of the project tabs and the canvas sidebar, everything else you've seen before. There were some other features that I didn't get a chance to play with yet, like vector node editing and some enhanced bitmap settings. I will for sure take a look at those in future videos after I get some time to play with them. Well, this video is already way longer than I anticipated, so let's wrap things up with a plug. If you just watched this video and didn't understand a word I said, I've got something for you in the works. I'm currently filming two beginner crash courses for how to use your Xtool S1 with Creative Space 2.0, as well as how to use your Xtool P2 with Creative Space 2.0. We're gonna cover the very basics, like what each part of your laser does, 
the different types of files and designs you'll encounter, how to use the Creative Space software, most importantly, how to use the rotary attachments. I'll give you some of my personal tips I use every day and more. I want you to hit the ground running with your new Xtool laser. They will be paid courses that aren't gonna be on YouTube, but everyone that signs up for the email list will get access at a massively discounted rate if you do decide it's something you're interested in. As always, thanks for watching. Keep your eye out for the 2.0 update and I'll catch you later.